How is it going guys? Today I'm going to be doing my out of box review for the HGUC Revive Cubelet. Now just want to say a big thank you to Mind Phoenix Hobby Store for supplying me with this kit to share with you guys. This is an amazing kit and I can't wait to talk to you guys about it. I've waited long enough. I know you guys have been waiting patiently for this review so let's get right into it. Now the Cubelet is a design that a lot of people love and a lot of people don't really love. It's not for everyone. It's a really unique design. I think in the series, you know, in Zeta, it was, even at that time, very unique. So, you know, uh, there's maybe a lot of mixed opinions about it, but there is no question that is a very, very uh, iconic and classic design in the series. Uh, so, let's get this going around. Right off the bat, this is a huge improvement over the previous HGUC kit, so that's already a big success. I think the main goals for the revive for the revive line have been to improve the proportions and improve the articulation. So already we can see the proportions are already much much better. I think it's not so like frumpy looking as the old one was. So that's definitely better. The part separation, the color separation is amazing. All of this pink that we're seeing coming through the parts is a part behind there. The only place that it's a sticker is uh, these small little uh, color apps here on the front and back of the shoulder binders. So those little places are stickers, but otherwise everything on the backpack, the front skirt, the legs, uh, those are all a pink piece behind the white part, so that's awesome. I'm going to make it really easy to paint that. Uh, and then even like on the feet, we got some uh, purple color apps poking through there, through the pink part, uh, just in the chest, the uh, gray parts for the tubing there. So just really, really nice color separation. When we open up the binders, you'll see there's some not really nice gray mechanical detail inside there as well. So it's all really, really nice. Uh, really well designed kit and we'll take a look more at that when we talk about the articulation. For the accessories for this kit, it's going to be pretty minimal, but you know, the Cubelet doesn't use any sort of traditional kind of rifle or anything like that. I suppose if you wanted to get creative, you could give it one, but uh, if you want to keep it canon, uh, pretty much what you see is what you get for this kit. All the weapons are just kind of built in. It's going to be relying mostly on the funnels, of course, and then also on its beam sabers, which are built into the arm, you can see there, just above the hand. So, in terms of uh, seam lines, this is going to have a couple of nasty seam lines, but those are just going to be basically on the back of the arm here, on the back of the forearm, is going to be pretty much it for seam lines. Uh, all, most of the other seams have been built in, in a way that they're uh, hidden as like armor uh, panel lines. So that uh, shouldn't be a problem like on the thighs and on the legs. So going to be no problem there for seams. I guess on the back of the feet, on the back of the pink part, there's another seam there. Uh, otherwise, shouldn't be too bad to work with that for you guys. So let's go ahead and take a closer look and talk about some of the articulation. Now, one thing I do want to point out about stickers, the other sticker is for the eyes, of course, and I've got them there in pink. But if you remember from the unboxing, we had two different options. We have the other option to make the eyes green if you want. So you can choose which one. Uh, pink, I think, is more traditional. So I went with pink. Uh, so the head is going to move up. It's got a really nice mechanism built in here to allow the head to come really far up to fly forward like that. Very, very nice. The sort of cockpit hatch here actually opens up as well. That should be the entrance to the cockpit. So if you wanted, you could just, uh, that square is outlined there. So you could just like drill that out and make it so it does look more like an actual cockpit. Would be pretty cool. I am hoping to do a uh, short little kind of tutorial video how to make funnel effect parts for this kit. So maybe at that time I'll show you guys uh, just a really quick little thing of how to drill out that thing to make the cockpit look more convincing. Mm, would be a pretty simple little thing to do. So if you guys want to see that, let me know in the comments down below and uh, I'll do that in that video as well. Uh, so that's it for the head. Obviously very long head there. I'm going to be going up and down uh, pretty nicely. In the waist, it's going to be moving side to side a little bit, front, uh, forward, and back. It's going to be not too far forward, actually pretty much nothing, but back, we are going to have a little bit of movement here uh, to bend it back like that. And again, I think that's uh, mostly to help 
with it sort of like flying forward to bend the torso back a little bit, bend the head all the way back so that it can achieve that look of flying forward pretty well. And what it's meant to do, bend, the binders are supposed to fold down something like this uh, for when it's flying like that. So let's talk about the binders because these are actually really nicely articulated. You can just totally close them up or you can separate them move them around in a lot of different ways. They're connected by uh, a couple of parts up inside of there, which are very, very nicely articulated and very secure. So you're able to move the binders uh, very easily. And again, here's some of that mechanical detail inside there. If you want to go in and paint, you could do some really nice painting inside here. Maybe, I mean, it's similar to the Master Grade. The Master Grade might have a little bit more detail up inside there. Uh, but it's, it's got to be pretty close because the Master Grade, honestly, is really quite old. So it's probably going to be showing some age now even compared to this kit. For the arms, they're just going to be rotating at the top. And then a double joint at the elbow, but just due to the design of this, uh, you're really only going to be able to get about a 90 degree bend there at the elbow. So not too much. The hands are just on a ball joint. And then we have this part here, which I might have to take off the hand to get to this. This pink part here uh, comes out in like the wrist. So we have that kind of extra part there. It goes back. So uh, it's kind of tricky to get it out there, but uh, once you do, it's going to add a little bit there, just sort of wrist guard. And then onto the backpack. The backpack is just going to move uh, up and down just a little bit. Obviously there is all of our funnels under there are 10 individual funnels. These are able to all come out just like this. So that's very easy. And then we can just plug those back onto there. Honestly, without any effect parts for this, uh, it's really kind of useless to have those all coming out. You're probably just going to want to just glue them all in place if you're not going to be using any effect parts uh, just so that you don't lose them. So like once you're through painting, just gluing them all in there or even just gluing them and then painting because it's all the same color, right? So, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Again, you know, band, the P Bandai is going to be releasing the effect parts for those, but uh, if you don't want to spend the, I think it was like six, 1,600 yen, something like that, 1,200 yen, something, uh, for that effect set, then, you know, you're just going to keep those in the backpack. Side skirts are able to move up and down just just a little bit, there's not really too much there, and then the front skirt is able to move up and down just a little bit there as well, so not really going to be too much to do with that. The legs are going to be able to go out very far and forward about this far, double joint there, and the knee is really quite nice with this knee armor uh, being separated there, the pink part up inside there giving some nice color separation. You're able to get a uh, pretty far bend there in the knee, I suppose that's pretty nice. Again, nice color application here with the blue uh, popping through on the thigh as well. So that's really quite nice. The ankles are going to be pretty good. You're going to be able to move them side to side just a little bit. The toe is able to point down, so that's nice. I always love when you're able to point the toes down on the kits like that. Back of the feet, I don't really particularly care for. This is one of the things of probably the, the aspect of the Q blade that I like the least is this like big bulbous part here on the back of the foot. It looks kind of goofy. Uh, but it is going to be very secure, so it is going to let you uh, stand up with no problems. With this being such a very odd, uh, quite large kit and strangely proportioned, it is able to stand up uh, very fine with those very big feet. And just as you saw there, the knee armor is able to point down as well. Again, that's for when it's flying. You can point the legs. Uh, the knee armor down and the feet down like that for its kind of flight mode. It's not exactly a flight mode, but kind of like that. So that's it for the articulation. For the accessories, one of the things we have is a set of open hands. Now, these kind of open hands like this is another kind of iconic thing about the cubelé to have hands like this. So really cool that we have these included. The thumb and fingers are articulated. The four fingers are connected though but they all have their own separate ball joint. So if you wanted to just cut those down the middle, you could make each single finger articulate if you wanted to. It probably wouldn't do you too much good because uh, this is probably just the position you're going to want these hands in anyway. Any other position and it kind of looks like a little bit goofy. 
So just due to the shape that the fingers are molded in, just keeping it like this is probably what you're going to want to go for. And then we have our two clear yellow beam saber effect parts. Now these can just plug into the arm like this. If you wanted to have just something like that, it's just pretty uh, cool, simple like that. Or if you want to pull the beam saber out all together, you can do that as well. Just pulls out of there, pops into the hand, and it does have a certain way. You can see the way the hand is molded. There is a little notch in there, and this notch in the beam saber handle is going to fit in there, so the beam saber handle is going to be very secure in the hand, which is very nice. And then we can put our beam saber effect in, and there you go, there's our beam sabers for that. So, and that's it for the accessories. And just to give you guys a little bit of a size comparison, here you can see it compared with the HGUC Revive Gundam. And as you can tell, quite a bit larger. The other interesting thing you can see here is that it very clearly illustrates uh, the difference in white color. The Cube Light is a very brilliant, bright white color, pure white, whereas the Gundam is obviously, uh, it should be very obvious now anyway, that the uh, Gundam is a very, very off-white color. It's definitely a greenish, uh, off-white color there. So you can see that really quite clearly and just really how big the Cube Light is. So it's going to be definitely a pretty sizable 144 scale kit. So here you can see up on action base is going to allow you to really utilize that amazing articulation that this kit really has. Again, miles above what the old HG had. I've never built, in all honesty, I've never built the old HG, but just of course I've seen plenty of photos of it and builds of it in the past and I know this one uh, definitely moves much much better. One thing I did forget to mention about these open hands is that they do also have an articulated wrist so that at the wrist those are also able to bend forward and back as well to give you a nice really far bend back for these like for this really open flying hand to sort of look to that so again really cool would be cool you know if this came with effect parts but can't really uh, be too surprised about Bandai trying to sell those as uh, premium sets uh, otherwise, I mean, yeah, it looks really great on an action base. So with that, it's going to be pretty much it. There's really not a whole lot else to say about this kit. I mean, what it really brings to the table is not a whole lot of different, like, weapon options, but just the new and improved look, which it nails, the new and improved articulation, which it also nails, and that's pretty much it. Like I said, the weapons on it are going to be just very minimal, just the beam sabers, which you can see here, which do work very, very nicely. I think they're really also really quite nice actually. And then the funnels which are really going to be pretty much useless unless you have the effect parts but those are going to be there and they are going to you know be an iconic part of the look of the kit but you know uh, they're not really going to act as doing too much in this review just because there's not really for much for them to do. So if you guys do have any other questions or comments about this, uh, leave those down below. One thing that I was suspecting that we might have this is that I was thinking that uh, the white was maybe going to be like an extra finish white because a lot of the pictures that we saw of it before the kit came out, it was very, very shiny. So I thought that maybe the white was going to be extra finished, but I can tell you now that it is not. It is definitely a pretty glossy, very bright white, but it, I don't think it has any extra finish on it at all. It's just a bright white uh, polystyrene, that's it. So that's pretty much it, guys. Thank you for watching. If you have any other questions or comments, like I said, leave those down below. Otherwise, I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.